How's it going everybody? My name is Scott Stewart. I am the owner of L&L Grooming and this video is for Melvin of New York. We are going to make him a brush. I recently acquired a GoPro as you can probably tell so I figured you know what the hell see uh see how POV videos do for brush making. Uh, probably won't do this when I'm turning on the lathe, but for this portion at least, uh, it will ideally help you kind of see what's going on a little bit better. I'm just preparing my molds right now. Melvin has requested that this video contain, basically be an uncut video. Uh, mistakes and all so gonna be making him a one of my black hat brushes which I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you I doubt that the that what I'm gonna pour right now will turn into the final brush I'll probably have to do this more than once uh, these are not easy brushes to make uh, for a couple of reasons I'm not going to be doing too many more of these because they are just a huge headache for a lot of different reasons. There's a lot of points of failure here or ways that things can go wrong. And yeah, you know, it it's not really fun or economical to have to try to make the same brush like five times. So another new thing that's going to happen today is I'm going to be using Alumilite Clear Slow. Uh, as it has become summer here and it's, it's perpetually at least 80 degrees in my shop, uh, my regular Alumilite Clear that I've been using forever is just curing too quickly, uh, which leading to a little bit of an air bubble issue and I figured you know I'll just give this stuff a shot uh, it takes it longer to cure which should give me more time to work on it as well as uh, give air bubbles more time to work their way out so this will be my as you can see I'm just opening these jugs here this will be my first first experience with this stuff so uh, for this particular brush he asked for just a just a little bit of sparkle in the black portion which I have no problems doing that this is alumilite black dye it's a very concentrated uh, black, very opaque, and to it I'm going to add some of this Slice of the Moon Shimmer Pearl. I'm adding that much, and I, I don't know if you could see how much I added. It looks like a lot, but the opacity of this Alumilite dye kind of makes it necessary that I use that much. And it still it won't be very apparent in the final brush. So I have that set aside, uh, and I don't need this cup, so I'll go ahead and measure this out. This is going to be a larger brush, so um, I'm pouring it into 2 inch PVC molds rather than the usual 1.5 that I normally do, so i got to use more resin. going to do six and a half of each side just to make sure that I have plenty and the black part is not the part that concerns me about this brush it's the uh, the part that has the liquid dye in it so I'm going to use more or I'm, I'm gonna try and pour enough of the black for two brushes just so that I don't have to do this particular mixture again All right, right at 13. Sorry, I did not light 
this better. I had kind of hoped that the sun coming in from over there would give us a little bit more light, but it does not look like that's the case today. A little piece of uh, either wood or PVC, but since there will be a lot of transparency in this brush, can't really have that in there. And earlier, after I prepared the molds, the uh, the spray I used was just a silicone mold release spray, which honestly I don't I don't know how much benefit I actually derive from that. After I use a mold about two to three times, if I use it again, the blank's going to bind to something that I can't see or feel, and it's going to break when I try and get it out either way. Uh, but I just use it because, well, I have it, uh, but I don't really, I don't really notice a difference. I'm trying to get right down to the bottom without submerging my hand. That looks good. So now, just get my molds over here. Hmm. Probably should have put this in a larger cup, but I can make this work. Probably. I don't really have anything interesting to say about mixing resin. It's, you know, just stirring it with a popsicle stick. I've arbitrarily decided that this mold on the left will be the mold for the black. What I'm going to do is pour that in there and then add some clear to it. go. You know what? There. Give it another mix. If I didn't mix it, there would be pockets of clear, which, I mean, I do that with a lot of my clarity brushes. That's kind of, that's how they work, but that is not what we're doing today. So the black is prepared. So this isn't even getting hot yet. I can, I'm already wondering why I didn't buy this particular, um, the slow version of this resin a lot sooner because seven minutes is a, uh, it's a pretty tight deadline <laughs> to work under when you've got lots of different things to do, like mixing multiple colors and stuff like that. Nice towel here, get the resin off my hands. So I, don't know how well you can see it, probably not very well, but I, uh, I estimated the amount pretty well. This is Alumilite Red Dye. This is where things go off the rails, but I won't know it until much later. My goal here is to not use much dye at all and try to keep it in the center, more or less. Like that one drop that I just dropped in, I'll show you what that does. So it's more dense than the resin, so it sinks. I, I know you can't see it, which is unfortunate. I will light my next video better. But even just that one drop. Wish you could see it. Looks good. I'm gonna go with this. So now we're going into the pressure pot and since I have this GoPro on you can see what I do when I normally cut my videos off here. It's pretty simple. It's 
just a uh, a paint pressure pot. This this lid I've modified for this particular application. I will not go into the specifics now, but very important to have this on nice and tight. I've had an explosive decompression before, and that is not, that's just not a fun experience. Here's my super tiny air compressor, which I don't use any air tools, so I don't need, I don't even need one with a tank really. This, this is all I use it for and it works great. So. All right, so we are at a good 55 uh, PSI and I need to, I need to actually read this. So two to four hours to demold on this Alumilite clear slow. So that's, uh, that's certainly a downside versus the clear that I'm used to, but you know, there's always a trade-off for everything. So, oh, if I forgot, I swear if I forgot to put the lid on the hardener side and this whole thing dried out, that would be, that would be pretty tragic for me. All right, so it's under pressure. So two to four hours, I'll come back and uh, pull them out and we'll, you know, we'll see what we're looking at. All right, and I'm back to, I promised an uncut video mistakes and all. So this here is, n while it might be a pretty awesome piece of modern art, I guess, uh, this is what happens when you let your clay get too dry. I, uh, I don't like wasting things. I wanted to push this clay as far as I could and, well, I did. Um, what happened this here, you can see this is all that remains of the uh, the red and transparent blank that I poured. Uh, it leaked and leaked all over the inside of my pressure pot, which is what this is. And you know, clearly there's not enough to be usable there. So I went ahead and opened my new box of clay. So here's my brand new uh, 10 pound block of clay. So gonna pour this one again real quick. Once the, uh, when the clay dries out, it doesn't really seal as well as, uh, as well as new moist clay does. And I have, I have, uh, experimented with adding water to the clay and that, uh, you know, it, it certainly makes the clay wetter, but also very sticky and just, just terrible to deal with. So, you know, this is just all, all part of it. So now we've got that mold ready to go. I will use my potentially useless spray. This is a new mold. The, uh, the last one was probably about at the end of its usable life. And if there's, if I have any concerns that it may be, I just go ahead and cut a new piece. Uh, PVC is really cheap. So just real quick, I'm gonna do three and a quarter ounces of both sides here. Well, three and a half. It'd be a little bit of waste, but that's okay. I've got my red alumilite dye on hand. Bring this up to seven ounces.
and stir it. I, I pour the resin slowly just because it cuts down on waste. If you use too much of the hardener once you once you have the uh, the first side in, then well, there's no way to take it out. So you wind up having to use more of the first side, and you just wind up wasting resin, which technically I'm already doing because I poured too much of the first side, but you know it happens. So we are good and mixed. Get the mold here. Get rid of the popsicle stick. Don't need it. Hey, it's not. It's actually not a lot of waste good. So once again, the Illumilite red dye, I'm going to do one drop. Just one. Letting that sink. About midway now, give or take. It's a very slow stir, just trying to uh, make some interesting designs there, right in the middle. I think that looks pretty good. So, you know, let's hope that this new, new clay holds. So back in the pressure pot. Everything's tight. We're at 55 PSI, so I'll give that a couple of hours. Uh, this is the black portion. I'll uh, one second here, I'll show you what this looks like. I do this on the floor just because it, it doesn't dent uh, my workbench. So, it's just a hammer. This is a ball peen hammer. Really, any hammer will do. See, this is what I was talking about when I say that I don't really feel that the uh, the mold release spray does anything. But what you can see happens here is just a little bit of resin leaked out, just enough to uh, kind of create a layer that has bonded to the bottom of the PVC here. And this is probably on the uh, the second second or third use for this piece of PVC, which means it is at the end of its usable life. If you can't tell from how many times I've hit it with a hammer already. All right, so that's our that's our black piece. Broke the mold getting it out, but you know, 
wasn't going to use that piece anyways again so here's the black you can't really maybe you can see the sparkle here I wanted it to be pretty pretty muted and it looks pretty muted looks good so I will set this aside and wait for the other piece to finish and I'll be back all right everybody so the uh, the last time that I opened the pressure pot before I started the video because I didn't expect there to be a problem but there was so I figured I won't deprive you of uh, of seeing it this time in case there's another problem and we can all have a good laugh about it and I can pour another blank so okay so this one did not leak look at that let's see what we're looking at here and you'll see the difference with a, uh, a new mold that's pretty much it that's how easy it is with a new mold So here's our blank. I've got some, right off the bat, I've got some concerns about how this is going to look once it's turned. Uh, looking straight through here, you can see how a lot of the pigment is not right in the center, which if you recall, I said specifically <laughs> I try to keep it right in the center. There's some stuff that happens, physics, that I don't quite understand that happen either because it's under pressure or that causes some movement or something. I don't know. Uh, either way though, since this is so far out, when I turn it, it'll be important that because I'm, I'm probably I'm gonna wind up using about this much of the blank here uh, I spoke with Melvin earlier and he uh, the brush that this is gonna be modeled on he said he really liked the clear at the top so this will at least give us that I'll, I'll actually I'll probably cut off somewhere around there and use about this much and keep the uh, the diameter or aim to keep the diameter pretty big uh, so that we don't lose all of this nice coloring here so yeah I'm going to let this cure for a little bit longer just in open air the um, the technical data sheet for this particular resin says that it's not fully cured for five to seven days. I think it's something similar with Alumilite Clear, but I pretty much totally disregard that and it hasn't caused me any problems yet. So this already feels pretty hard. Uh, my very unscientific test is to kind of press the edge here I can feel it's not it's not totally totally rigid but it is definitely more cured than I expected for the, uh, the three hours it was in there so yeah I'll be back once it's time to take our section here which I'll just I'll cut off on the bandsaw just just up here and then I'll put this uh, in my chuck on the lathe and do my best to true it up make it as absolutely flat as possible I will do the exact same with the black and laminate them together and we'll go from there 
All right, and I'm back. Uh, I have to talk a little bit louder because I have the GoPro in a, uh, a case that covers the microphone, so I don't know how well you can hear me. Uh, one thing I did off camera is I went ahead and just kind of took a little bit off the top here on my bandsaw. Uh, there's, it really didn't miss much of anything. So what I'm going to do now is... Chuck this up here. It's important to uh, to get this spinning as true as possible. Alright, so these are pretty close to true, so pretty close. So now it's time to glue them. I'm going to glue them like that. Uh, give me one second, I'll switch to the head mounted camera and be right back. Alright, so time to glue. Uh, what I'm going to be using here is first off polypropylene gloves. Uh, it took me years of working with CA to learn that it doesn't bond very well with uh, polypropylene. Uh, every other glove material I've used, you know, it, I mean, CA, which we're going to be using, is super glue, which sticks to most things. So, yeah, polypropylene's just kind of not one of them. And I'm going to be using stick fast flexible CA. Uh, I find that I have the lowest occurrence of air bubbles between layers with the flexible. I don't know why. What I need to do is get all of this uh, stuff off of here. I have a nice clean surface. All right, and you'll notice I have a, uh, a hand screw clamp here, another clamp. And I'm not going to use either of them. Uh, every time I clamp one of these brushes, I wind up with air bubbles that I can't, that just, they appear almost as if by magic. It's like I'll have it like this, then I'll clamp it, and there will be just a slight movement that will move it just a little bit. And the CA, uh, shrinks as it cures and that already has the potential to introduce some air bubbles so anyways there's a lot of talk about something really simple that i'm going to do here i don't i don't really I'm positive I could use a lot less glue than this. I mean, the excess is just going to run out down the sides anyways. And it'll glue to this clamp, and that's okay with me right now. What I'm more concerned about is right when the glue is still wet like this, the uh, the top blank will slide right off, and that's that's certainly not what I'm looking for. This is a little bit of accelerator. I 
and that's it for now. Uh, gonna give this a little while to cure. Once it cures, I will come back. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just bandsaw off the ex or most of the excess black. I'm gonna do that off camera just because it's not there's you know it's not interesting to see. Yep, and the accelerant got in there and we are good and oh, alright, well never mind. Take it back. So anyway, so I'm gonna give this a little bit and it'll be back and we can finally turn a brush. Okay, so here's our blank. Finally ready to start turning this into a brush. Uh, the lamination went pretty well. Uh, I'm actually quite pleased with it. Uh, I tell you, not clamping goes against everything I know, but it works the best. So, like I said, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get this here just like this. Uh, I'm going to flatten this face a little bit. This this part it doesn't have to be really flat like the um, like the faces had to be before I laminated them. So I'm going to flatten this up. I've got my one and a quarter Forstner right here, and I'll flatten this, drill the hole, use my one and a quarter Beal IX collet, and turn the brush. That's what I'm going to do right now. I won't be talking for the remainder of this. Uh, so, yeah, might give you some background music.
and here we are. So I was going to do uh, completed photos, but I decided I'll put those at the beginning of the video and just kind of take a second to show you where we landed. This, this brush is honestly, it surpassed my expectations. Uh, I think it's just absolutely awesome. This is a uh, 30 millimeter uh, silver tip premium knot. It is nice and dense. This, this is just, this is a nice brush. So again, uh, my name is Scott Stewart. I'm the owner of LNL Grooming. Thank you for watching.